Alright, here's our digital multimeter. First of all, there's a little button up top that if you want to tilt this screen up to make it a little easier to see, you can do that. These aren't the most technologically sophisticated pieces of equipment, but you have to know how to use them correctly. So, first of all, we've got two buttons up here. One of them is a power button. The other one says DC or AC. When we're measuring things like electrochemical cells, things like batteries, those are direct current sources. So we want DC, we want that button to be up. Okay, that button is up. Let's turn the power on and we're seeing some reading, but what is this reading on the on the dial. Let's try to zoom a little bit in on that. We've got quite a few options on this dial. So we've got, well that looks like some kind of a little step. There's an omega. What does that measure? Uh, I don't know. What about, well here's an A. We're not measuring A's. This particular one has a bat and it says 9V and 1.5V. Well that probably is just for batteries. 9 volt or most of the other types of batteries are 1.5 volts. And up here there's a big V because what we're going to be measuring is a potential and potential is usually measured as a voltage. So we want to measure a voltage but we've got a whole bunch of options for voltages. Which one do we want to use? Well, all of these different options just tell us the scale of our voltage reading up on the screen. So if we start all the way down here, these meters can actually read fairly high voltages. I don't think we're going to be up in this range because, well, that could be a little dangerous. But what is this? 222 and 200 M. Let me zoom out just a little bit so that we can see the display. So if I turn this to 200, it's telling me that the reading is 0.9 on the 200 scale. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's try flipping it to 20 and see what did you notice that? Watch the decimal point. When you switch from 200 to 20, all it does is move the decimal point. So in the 200 setting, this meter can measure up to 200 volts, but it only gives you one decimal place of information. If I switch this to 20, well now this will only measure up to 20 volts, but it'll give me two decimal places of information. So for your measurements, you should use whichever one of these settings gives you the most decimal places, the most significant figures of information you can, you can get. So let's switch this down to two. That looks pretty good. Again, you see the decimal point moved. So this is 0.921 volts. Now just to show you what can happen in some of these, let's switch it down to the 200M. That's what's going to happen because 200 M can measure up to 200 millivolts. But we've got more than 200 millivolts. So essentially we've overloaded the meter. So let's back that off to the two and we're back to our 0 0.920 volt reading. That's really all there is to it. The only thing that's a little funny about these is you see right there, this has an auto power off. So after a certain amount of time, these turn themselves off. If yours turns itself off, it's really no big deal. Just toggle the switch through the off position and back on, and it'll come back to life for you. If your numbers start misbehaving a little bit, these run on batteries, and the batteries run out sometimes. So if your numbers start misbehaving or don't seem to make a whole lot of sense, you might just have one that's got a low battery. Let somebody know either me or your lab assistant and we'll get that fixed up for you.
And that's really all there is to measuring the potential for this particular cell. You can move along and let's unhook the meter. You can take your salt bridge out. I would probably just give it a very gentle dab to get most of that off if I want to switch to the other cell. Let me switch to the other cell. Okay, hook up the, the meter and we should be ready to go. When you're finished measuring everything, well, the first thing you can probably do is take your salt bridge out, gently just dab the ends dry, and return it to the jar. There will probably be a separate jar that says return salt bridges here. Return it to the jar because we can use these over and over again all day long. There's one more part of the experiment that involves looking at how concentration affects voltage. We're measuring those pretty much the same way you just measured these, so again, follow along with the procedure in the manual and you should do pretty well. That's the experiment. As far as equipment that we're using, again, this really isn't the most high-tech piece of scientific equipment. Those multimeters are really, really nice and handy and they can tell us a lot of information, but as long as the batteries are in good shape, they're pretty foolproof and they usually behave pretty well. See you on Thursday.